Hi, welcome to my EcoBuzz. I'm Jessica Gregory. This week I'm out at Hemlock Crossing Park in uh, West Olive, Michigan. Yeah, it's one of the Ottawa County parks and um, we're right next to the Pigeon River. But what I really want you to notice is the woods that I'm standing in and all of the downed woody debris, all of the logs that are laying on the forest floor here. Um, because of all of the, the logs that I'm seeing and the proximity to a body of water, I know that this is a really good place for a salamander scavenger hunt. So this week, um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about how to find salamanders, how to identify one of the common salamanders that we have in Michigan, and how to be respectful of their habitat. So uh, we're gonna find a good log and we're gonna roll it over, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And hopefully we'll find a salamander. So come along with me, let's go check it out. Okay, I'm going to roll this log here and see what we find. Aha! Sometimes it takes a minute to find it. But here we have a little red-backed salamander. This is one of um, the most common salamanders that we find in Michigan. Um, and they spend most of their time under rotting logs or um, other debris on land. And um, normally, this late in the spring, um, the temperatures would be warm enough that these critters will be um, underground. They usually burrow pretty deep underground in order to stay cool and moist. Um, but because of the cooler weather that we've had so far into the spring and the, the rain, um, we're finding them in a lot higher numbers and um, more frequently than, than we do some years. So um, this is really cool. This little salamander, again, the red-backed salamander, actually comes in two color phases and um, you can see that he has that nice red stripe down his back um, so this is the red back um, phase but there's also a lead back phase that um, it has the same body shape same size but it just lacks that red stripe so it's more of a, a black color overall um, maybe with a little little bit of salt and pepper coloring um, and as I'm looking I'm seeing another one right here too um, so this is really fun. This is a good time of year to come out and um, look for these guys. So I'm really glad that I found some. There he goes. He's trying to hide um, down in the um, debris there. Hey, buddy. Now, if you do go out to look for salamanders like I am, part of the etiquette of log rolling is to make sure that you put it back to the position that it was in when you originally found it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just roll this log back. And I don't need to worry about squishing the salamanders. They have a um, very low body profile. They're very flat um, and they'll burrow down deep under the ground. So I don't need to worry about that. Um, but I do want to make sure that I'm protecting the habitat that they have there. Um, and also the habitat for the other decomposers um, that live under that log. So make sure you put the logs back. Um, and hopefully you noticed as I was looking at the, the salamanders that I did not handle them with my hands. I didn't pick them up, I didn't try to touch them. Um, it's not that you can't do that, um, although there are some salamanders that do secrete um, chemical toxins onto their skin that can actually burn your skin or, or cause irritation. Um, the redbacks don't do that, but um, by handling them, uh, you can actually transfer chemicals from your skin to their skin. And that's a big deal because salamanders and frogs and a lot of other um, amphibians, they breathe through their skin. They don't have lungs. So um, if you transfer chemicals to them, that could severely damage their, their skin and their ability to breathe. So um, just make sure that if you put on lotions or uh, bug spray or sunscreen or anything like that, even hand sanitizer, um, try not to handle them. Another fun fact about the red-backed salamander is that um, it can lose its tail if a predator tries to um, grab onto it to eat it. Um, it. The tail will just fall off. So it is possible while you're looking for salamanders that you might find one that just has a stub of a tail and you would know that it you know, was almost a predator's meal. Um, another cool thing about the red-backed salamanders is that they are, um, a salamander that actually lacks a aquatic larval stage. So frogs, for example, will have um, tadpoles that are aquatic um, until they 
grow legs and become an adult. Um, and a lot of salamanders will also have an aquatic larval stage with gills, not tadpoles exactly, but um, they'll have gills and they live in the water. Well, this, this one doesn't. This one, um, shortly after hatching, within a few days, um, the gills will fall off and you'll find them hiding under the logs just like the adults do. Um, so you might find really small versions of those salamanders as well. So yeah, hopefully you have fun um, getting out and uh, looking for some salamanders on your own. Um, this has been a lot of fun and it's just so much fun to have, have kids do. But um, again, make sure that you follow those etiquette rules and just be respectful to the creatures. So thanks for joining me this week. Happy naturing.